think that works. I should be close enough that y'all can hear me, I hope. Um, I'm just playing it around in the garage right now with my roaster. Started roasting. Uh, if you follow online, <clears throat> not online, I guess, on Instagram, you'll already know that. So, this is just, this is, this is play mode now. Well, not play mode, but experiment mode. With lots of coffee, lots of coffee beans, and trying to learn what the heck I'm doing. Um, so, basically, uh, if you follow on the Instagram on Fred's Roast, um, a while back I posted that um, the trailer's still a, a, a thing. It's still coming along. It's going to happen. Uh, but I was waiting until winter because I really want to serve coffee. Um, and there's not really a demand for coffee in the uh, summertime, let's say. Um, so, I wanted to get... I want to learn roasting first because I, I ideally want to have my own coffee. Like my whole like reason for wanting to do it is because I love coffee and I want to home roast my own coffee so I know it's good. Um, so that's it. So that was where I was changing gears to for now was to figure out the roast. So I have been playing around uh, for the past couple of days, getting a feel for the roaster, trying out some different things, making a few mistakes. Starting to narrow things down now, so I'm excited. Um, but yeah, roasting's fun. Uh, it's it's just like photography, like kind of have a triangle. Like you're working with heat, air, and time. Like it's all based on that. Um, and you just got to find the right balance. I know there were comments. Let's see. Hello, hello, hello. John, Pam. Board game. Good afternoon on the day before Newsom is voted out. I sure hope so. Jess, how's it going? Roger, how's it going? What's going on? Yeah, big day for California tomorrow, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I got a gut feeling, but I don't want to think that. But I've read some crazy stuff already with things saying people voted already but they haven't voted um that's kind of scary so i don't know it can't the the part that bugs me the most i think with that california recall is the circus of a ballot with you know 30 i don't know how many people on there it'll look like 30 people um because if you want larry elder to win you got 29 other people drawn from it, you know, and you got some someone that wants to vote for freaking Jenner, and then that takes away votes, and then you got somebody that votes for Joe Schmo that wanted to pay the whatever it was three thousand dollars to get on the ballot. Like it's not helping the, the cause. That's the frustrating part. Um, hope it works though. Hope it goes through. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that needs to change. It'll be rigged and we'll be screwed and locked down once again. That is, uh, I mean, from stuff I've seen on the internet today, with it's just weird with people saying that they're going to polling places and it shows that they've already voted. It's kind of odd. Those are the girls' beach cruisers. They don't get rowed very often because there's no beaches. I guess you could take them to Florida if we go to Florida. All right, I had to preheat this roaster to get this going. Um, but yeah, but my fingers are crossed for California because that'd be huge, huge if they can get that, if they can get it to go through. I mean, I think really, regardless of whoever they get in there for now, will be better. Um, I don't know, it's just an interesting, let's see. Yeah, I got my notes. I don't remember what I'm doing here. So, quarter cup EPO shit. 
quarter start at 30. Okay, that's going. Hopefully that's not too loud. You guys can't, it's not too much. Um, it's interesting with uh, Biden's whole uh, mandatory mandate. Um, because with the ECS or whatever it is, whatever it's called, the emergency, I forget the, the exact name of it, um, that goes through OSHA because he didn't legally go through OSHA planning to have a law put in place through OSHA. I think there's only been 10 done before and only five have ever passed. So will it stick? Who knows? There's all the lawsuits, everything. Who knows? I mean, if it's really as deadly as we say it is, why are we, why are we limiting it to a hundred people then, right? It should be every business in theory. Uh, it should be every employee, not just a hundred plus, but we all know where that's probably going to go. Hopefully cross our fingers. Um, what's I'm going to say? Would you move back if Elder wins? You're funny. It'll be my last vote before moving to Knoxville. Hey, at least you get the boat in. That's good. Had some friends that recently came out, and California was on top of it, I guess. Asking them if they had moved and changing their voter thing. So, we'll see. It's a big day for California, though. They got a lot of friends that are... I'm hoping for the, the right outcome for them, and, and many of y'all on there, too. It's a hard no. It's a, as hard as a no gets. Oy. All right, so really fell in love with this Ethiopian bean that I'm roasting right now. Um, I don't know if that would even come through on there. No. It's called Ethiopian Whoosh Whoosh. It's a natural grade one. Aromas of toast and jam and sweet wine. Flavors of preserved lemons, bittersweet chocolate, and orange. Um, it's ideally good for a light roast. So that's the one I've been working on today. This and uh, this one, the Burundi Caramiro. This one was really good too. And this is the both from Africa. Uh, this one was a savory cup with flavors of black tea, roasted hazelnut, molasses, and graham cracker. That one was really good too. So basically what I'm doing right now these are all one pound bags, little sample bags of green, green coffee bean. So that's what it looks like. Um, this is a Costa Rican. Um, I'm really a big fan of Ethiopians, um, just in general. But basically I've got I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I've got eight. I've already been through three. No, four. So I had 12, 12 of these one pounders. The roaster actually came with a sample pack. Um, I purchased some extra ones. I'm going through all these right now. Roasting them, testing them where they're at, seeing what I like. And then once I figure that out, I'm making a bunch more little sample packs and I'm giving out to the neighborhood. Uh, the cousins down the street having everybody try it because I want honest opinions like I know it's it's always funny when you give people stuff and you're like hey tell me what your feedback is you know and they would they don't want to be mean or you know hurt your feelings but this is like honestly like I need to know if it's nasty I need to know if it sucks like I need to know if you don't like it um this Costa Rica one's interesting Aromas of black pepper and brown butter, very sweet and juicy red apple character. That one sounds kind of good. See, I don't know. I don't know. There's so many to choose from. So excited. Lots of, I mean, I've got a couple Colombians. Colombian is such like a basic generic coffee. You can't really go wrong with the Colombians. Brazil, the sweet, bright coffee with hints of lemon and clove citrusy character um, Colombian again clean and bright with intense aroma
Peru. This is a fair trade organic. Bittersweet chocolate tones. Bright apple acidity shows high elevation origins, ripe berry, grape, and tropical flavors. Sounds really good. Um, Guatemalan, key lime, and mild melon sweetness with honey mouthfeel. I mean, they all sound amazing. Kenyan vanilla aroma, aromas with flavors of white grape, green apple, and dry sweet finish. There's so many, um, but it's cool. Like I like, I like getting it from the small, the small farmers um, that aren't really like these big producers. Um, I'm not gonna be doing a ton myself, you know, but if I get the 10 pound or 20 pound bags, it'll be cool to get them from these little farms, you know, that it's their family thing. And I gotta watch this angle one second. So, bean, and the coffee beans crack, just like popcorn. Like, I don't know if you can hear it popping, like cracking. So that's first crack. Um, so you, it goes through two stages of cracking and, and how long you're actually gonna do the roast. It's all, like I said, it's all time, heat. Um, keep going, so 1.30, we gotta stop it. So it's all finding that balance. And you're using smell, because this smells amazing. Uh, you're listening for that crack. And you're also looking at it too. You can see in there, there's a light. Um, so at 1.30, we're going to stop that. All right, so we just stopped. Good to go. Okay, so now that's going into cooling cycle. It cools for 13 minutes. So that'll kind of just do its thing. Um, but yeah, like I said, I want to, I like all these fair trade and organic because I want to know if, if I'm selling coffee out of that trailer and I'm selling coffee to people, I want to know where it came from. Um, I've had a lot of opportunities where I could just hook up with uh, somebody that roasts already and they put their coffee in a brown bag and put my name on it and then I go around and sell it or promote it as my own. Sure, it happens all the time, right? We see black label, brown bag, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't know. I just, I like, I like coffee enough that I want to have integrity with it and I want to know where it came from. Um, the fair trade and organic stuff is usually less pesticides and all that stuff, which we could all use a little less of that, I think. Um, so I want to do my best on my end before I give it over to the consumer uh, to make sure I'm doing my due, jil yeah, due diligence and uh, make sure it's good stuff, you know? Uh, I saw comments, hang on. Get back in here. I like Colombian. Show us a Jeep. That's my brother-in-law's Jeep. It never leaves this garage, unfortunately, because they never take it out. Uh, we were notified today we cannot volunteer at our kid's school today for dances or student store unless fully vaccinated. Really? That sucks for the poor kids. Sign me up. Just moving in the area as of today. I'll taste some coffee. Oh, nice. Welcome. Went to Langer's on the weekend and they require proof of vaccination in order to enter. Keep on driving. See ya. Do they come with a recipe for roaster, roasting? They do not. Uh, they just have, you know, the steps steps you go through to roast and then you gotta, it's just a science. You gotta play around and figure it out. Um, I bet it smells amazing in there. It does. More jobs coming to Maryville, Amazon. Yes, the fourth facility, I think, is now in planning. So it's going to be interesting to watch how uh, Blunt County and Maryville and all this area takes to it because, you know, everyone was so strong a year ago against uh, don't California my Tennessee, but uh, I think they would be screaming don't Amazon my Tennessee because uh, there's nothing that destroys small businesses and creates crowding like an Amazon. Amazon place. 
Hello from San Diego in construction industry. Just bid work to Irvine Company. Nice. Good company to get in with if you can. It does sound like a popping popcorn. People roast coffee beans in popcorn poppers, I found out. It's kind of cool. Coffee beans pop, they do. It's crazy. They crack, it's just the moisture and everything coming out, carbon dioxide and all that good stuff. Um, gonna spend two weeks in around Maryville in October. That's gonna be great weather. It's finally not blistering hot in Minnesota and humid and not freezing out with no mosquitoes. Enjoy it, it lasts a week. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like paradise for a week. Moving in October, looking forward to Richie Cream. They got all kinds of good stuff coming. It's going to be fantastic. Williams family want to use your realtor. We'll be out there in two weeks. Give Mandy a call. She's great. In Sandy's world. Oh, and Mandy is my realtor. Thanks for the videos, bro. I closed them off. Sweet. See, there you go. There's the feedback on Mandy right there. April's coming to Friendsville in three weeks. She's going to be a neighbor. That's sweet. Daughter and son-in-law bought in Lenore City. Lenore City's cool. I like Lenore City. Um, Lenore City and Loudoun are pretty cool. They're uh, still, still kind of like small, small town USA. Not as big, but they still have kind of everything, everything there. Um, yeah, definitely check out Mandy. She's she's worth it. Anybody will tell you on here, but I mean she's busy, um, so have some patience with her if she is if she doesn't get back to you right away. Middle Tennessee from Minnesota. I love where we're at now, but I'll admit I've been feeling rather homesick recently. Miss having a lake near me at any time. Where are you at in Middle Tennessee, Tyler? There's, well, there's not as many lakes in the middle, I guess. I guess down towards the south there's more. North Carolina checking in. I, mean, I want to go over to North Carolina. Um, Justice Apple Farms. That is a fun place to go with the family. If you guys are around, I think it's it's North Carolina, right? Yeah, it's North Carolina. Justice Apple Farms. You can go pick your own. They have tons already picked. They have apple donuts, apple fritters, apple pies, apple everything. And it's, oh, it's so good. Um, but if you look at them on Facebook or their website, they have like a schedule of what apples are available. And they're currently, right now, is like apple season. So they got plenty. Tyler's in Lebanon. Oh, okay. So you're... Yeah, you're right by the city. There's not too much around that way. What do you think about Kingston? Uh, Williams family? I like Kingston. I love Watts Bar. Watts Bar is... Um, where Tracy and I would like to end up, I think, on the water. It'd be sweet to live anywhere along Watts Bar. From Kingston all the way down. You go through Spring, like Spring City down that way. Um, anywhere along that area. I think it'd be fantastic. Have water levels improved from a few weeks back when your friends visited? Uh, yeah, the water water levels are up again. Because um, we had a lot of rain from those last two storms, and who knows what we're going to get from these next these next few that are coming through. I don't remember what this name is, but that tropical storm just off of Texas that's going to come up. It's not going to hit us. It's going to hang well south of us, but we will get some stuff from it. Um, so it'll be nice to get a little bit of rain. Uh, it hasn't been hot. It's warming up tomorrow. Tomorrow's 88, I think. Um, but then it dips down to 81, middle of the week, with some humidity probably picking up from this um, this storm that's going to come through. So we'll see. Uh, I'm ready for fall. I'm at that point now where it's been hot enough. I'm ready for it to turn the corner and put some layers on. Um, Randy, yeah, it's in any North Carolina route outside of Tennessee. Yeah, that's a cool place, Justice uh, Justice Apple Farm. I like that place. You going to get into hunting out there? Yeah, um, I've been begging my friends to take me, but my friends don't like to take me. Um, but that's a hunting thing, right? Somebody's going to take me eventually, and I'm going to learn. Um, I mean, we've hunt, gone for bird and stuff, and turkey hopefully we'll get a turkey this year to have uh for thanksgiving it'd be kind of fun to have like an actual one but deer i have not gone hunting for yet i would absolutely love to um just because i think it's great great to harvest your own meat and stuff and just have your freezer stock 
Which, speaking of which, we need to get another cow in this thing. We got tons of ground beef, but we don't have steaks, don't have roasts anymore, and it's so hard to get cows right now from our usual people um, because there's been such a demand. Jeremy, what up, Hogue? Been here a couple weeks now, been real nice. Sweet, glad to hear it. Tropics, Tropical Storm Nicholas, that's what I was looking for. Where are you in the ends? That was fast, from Fred to, to Nicholas. We are at the Apple Farm, go check out Cheney Rock and Lake Lure. It's right down the road. Okay, that's a good one to know. Gage Spees on Instagram, he's affiliated with Black Rifle. He loves bow hunting international though. I'll definitely check him out. That's one thing I'd love to do, because Halcom, Halcom's a big bow hunter. Um, I would love to learn bow hunting versus rifle just because of the effort and the challenge that it would take it would it takes a little bit more it's pretty easy to just you know scope out something from a few hundred yards out and, and make your shot versus having to actually have the skill and the patience and everything else that a bow would require to be at that close of range i think it'd be really cool um and i know it's a lot of work but I just got to break into it. I got to get a bow. Just got to start somewhere, I guess. Um, once I get Halcom out here, I think I will. But Halcom's got to get out here first. See what happens with the election tomorrow. Riverside County represented. Glad to be out of Cali. Was able to vote. Knew some out before I left. Sweet. Every vote, well, every vote used to count. I hope. Hello from Menifee. Hello from, oh, Louisiana. What's going on, Dwayne? I'm the Greenback High neighbor. Hey, deer come through the yard yesterday morning. We have a huge, there's a huge buck that goes behind this garage every morning. But it's kind of like a, like a packed around the neighborhood. Like you don't shoot deer around the neighborhood because I don't know, everybody just enjoys them. Like, like, it's cool when you wake up and there's just, like, deer chilling in the front yard. Like, and you just watch them kind of do their thing. They're such a cool animal. Um, Macy isn't a fan of them, but she's learning to sit there and watch them now and knows they're not going to come attack her or anything. So, but it's just something with, like, within, and I say neighborhood. It's not like we're in a neighborhood, but amongst the neighbors, amongst this, this area, just... I don't know. You don't really, you know, bother them around here because we like to see them. Tons of them have babies and stuff. It's crazy. Um, just watching how quick those little pumps grow up. Um, and they just, I don't know, it's kind of become part of the landscape. It's cool to, it's cool to see. Uh, describe, Randy, I just subscribed. Cool, man. Welcome. Uh, venison spaghetti sounds amazing. I would love to try that. Corky, how's it going? Um... Williams fan, when we move out there, I'll teach you how to bow hunt. I will gladly take you up on that. We will make lots of videos and show me doing that. And I'll probably mess up a lot. and It'll be a learning experience, which is cool. But that's why I'm here roasting. Yes, Corky, this is the roaster. Um, uh, basically, I've gone through every batch. <clears throat> every batch, I'm making notes. Smells, what it looks like, sounds, like... So I found, I found a guy on YouTube. YouTube Academy is fantastic. I love YouTube. Um, he's a, a retired engineer and he found coffee. He loves coffee. So that's like his next thing in life um, is coffee. So of course this guy is like, he's got spreadsheets galore. He created a program on the computer um, where you can track everything and it gives you I mean, it gives you all this, these data curves and everything, and you can copy and, and save profiles and everything, so you know exactly what you did, what you did wrong, what to do next time. This one works, that one doesn't work. Too much air, too less of air. You know, you need to open your door to cool it. Don't open the door. Um, it's this is fantastic guy that I found because he's just like retired engineer, nothing but time, and he's just dedicating everything to coffee roasting now. So I'm gonna learn as much as I can from him, but. That was his main thing was, you know, as soon as you start roasting, 
Document, document, document. Write everything down. Um, keep track of it all. So, you got a chafing tray. So this is all the stuff that comes out of the beans, out of the seed. These are all now cooled. <clears throat> so it was just about an eight minute roast. Eight minute roast with like a 12 minute cooling time for this little batch. This is only a quarter pound. I did about three quarter pound earlier. So this is... Show the beans. That's a pretty good color. I'm pretty satisfied with that. That smells delicious. Um, I've got like so many. I'm just thinking of like all different like ways of like things we could do with flavors. So I mean, flavor flavored coffee is huge, obviously too, right? Um, and how you flavor coffee is. There's lots of different steps. You can do it with oils. Um, literally, it's like, so these beans are warm. So you can get like one of those little cement mixers from like Harbor Freight or Home Depot, like a little tiny one, right? Little plug-in one does like a little little drum, right? Basically, that's what you're doing is you, you pour the beans in there, depending on how many beans you have, and then you pour the oil in there. It tosses them for 15 minutes or so, and then you're gonna um, seal them, and then they stay that way. That's how you get, you know, French vanilla bean, uh, you get any of those almond almond toffee beans or any type of flavored bean, really. That's how you're going to get it is they just toss them in that and coat them um, once they come out of the roaster. Now, you can do stuff with spices. Um, I think with this one, I'm going to mess around just for Babs to try um, like a pumpkin spice blend. But really, it's just adding spice, like spices to the grounds and then sealing it, letting it absorb. Um so I was thinking, like, there's all kinds of stuff we could do. Like, am I going to be the first one? I think I'm going to be the first one. I'm going to try, I'm going to try, like, a jalapeno coffee or something. We're going to roast. I put a jalapeno in there while we roast. Like, hey, what are you doing? Come here. You want to say hi? Come here. Hey. Come here. Come on. Can you come up? Come up. Oh, big dog. Look at, look at, look at, they want to see you. Look. Huh? Oh. Your breast stinks. You need some coffee. You like coffee beans? She loves the coffee beans. She loves the smell. Watch. <laughs> you can't have any coffee beans. Um, so yeah. So it's just going through and trying to play with the flavors now and, and find, uh, find the right stuff. Let's see. Um, is that the roaster? Yeah, we answered that, I think, cork, right? Um, gotta put in for elk lottery out by you when you get in the hunting grape. Yeah, I love, dude, I've had some good elk before that friends have brought me, and elk, man, if you could get an elk and just put that in your freezer, whew. You go to, I did not go to that game, the Maryville Alcoa game. Uh, the girls went, though, jam-packed. Um, small coffee vendor there, good stuff there out of Maribel. Um, Vienna, Quick Fix, um, trying to think of who, Southern Grace, trying to think of what small ones might be there. Vienna's the only one with a trailer, really. Um, uh, that game was cool, and I, it was absolutely awesome how Alcoa came out with the 13 flags, um. Roger coffee looks wonderful too. It looks good. Let's hope it tastes good, right? Don't use good beans for flavoring. Yeah, I'm going to kind of work through these beans I have and figure out which ones are the ones that we don't really care for. Enjoying all the sounds of the crickets. You can hear all that? You can hear all the crickets? They are pretty loud, I guess. Moving to Tennessee from Florida. Can't wait. Lindsay, how's it going? Jeremy, Quick Fix. Okay, cool. Yeah, Quick Fix is awesome. Uh, cool old place. Um, Ms. Hafner, everything's going well. Hope you guys are doing awesome. Uh, quick fix is cool. I just found out from Dustin at Richie Cream that um, they sell Einstein bagels in there, which is cool because Tracy and I would always go up to um, 
That's funny. I call her Tracy. I never call her Tracy. Babs, as most of y'all know her as. Um, we go up to Turkey Creek because there's an Einstein bagels up there. And Einstein's really good. Like, I love Einstein bagels. Um, but Quick Fix has them, I guess. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right, I need to grind these beans. That's going to be it for tonight. What time is it? It's like... Oh, where are we at? Nine o'clock. All right. Going to Indiana this week for a wedding. Nice. Getting out. Cool. Cork? Really? Thursday. How exciting. And then, I think Arkansas, right? Arkansas bound? Be kind of cool. Um, yeah, I guess those crickets are pretty loud out there. Um... Oh, I should show. Brian just got back from Tennessee, met with Mandy. She's awesome. That's sweet. Glad you met with her. Um, yeah, if you guys don't follow the coffee channel, or I guess it's not a coffee. See, that's one thing I've been debating. Like, should I document all the coffee stuff on its own channel, like Fred's Roast channel? Because it's going to be... I'm just thinking of all the work, and I won't stay... I won't stay on top of it. And I think that's the problem is you'll get a couple videos like for a week and then you won't see anything for a while because I'll get too carried away. It'll be too much. Um, so I thought about doing a separate channel, but I think I'll just do it as a separate playlist on here. Anything that I do with roasting and, and, and coffee wise. Um, but if you're on Instagram, hop over to Fred's Roast um, on Instagram. Just... F-R-E-D-S-R-O-A-S-T. Sorry, it's late. Um, Fred's Roast. And I'll be I'll be posting way more on there. Uh, um, Update-wise of what we're doing. But we got these awesome little um, leather sleeves for your coffee cup. They're so awesome. Because Babs always takes these little plastic coffee cups in the morning to work. Just because they fit in the car. Cup holder really easy. But they're hot. Hot as can be to the touch. And I've got a couple neoprene ones that someone made me. You can obviously get the paper ones, but these leather ones are so awesome because obviously you could reuse them, but they just look so good. But I posted them over there on um, Instagram. They're really cool. So I got to figure those out. I got to figure out where I can get them from as opposed like not get them from the guy like I got them from that did them. I need to find like the little leatherette coffee sleeve whatever it is like it says made in china it has a part number on the back on the sticker of the package so i'm trying to find those buy those in bulk and then jeffrey cousin down the street has a little laser engraver i think we could use and then we can make them all 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 day long and then hopefully we can sell them or do something with them give them away with coffee and all that stuff but at least the cost wouldn't be there because so i think these were about I think they were like seven bucks at the end of the day by the time I got them from them. Seven bucks each. Which isn't bad if you're buying a reusable coffee sleeve. I mean, if I was at Frontier or Vienna or something buying coffee and I saw one of these, like, I'd be excited. I would buy, I would buy one for sure. Um, just because it's reusable. It's just like having a, um, you know, just like having like a koozie, I guess, that you would keep in camping stuff or the boat or whatever for your for your cans so um i really want to make those so those will be sweet um let's go back brian Lindsay, how did you come up with a name for coffee uh so fred's roast um i was like look i want to go buy that trailer we're gonna start a mobile coffee business we went and got the trailer got it home and i'm like we got to think of a name, like all this stuff, whatever. But I'm, I tried not to put the cart in front of the horse. Like I want to actually have the trailer figured out and all this stuff. Cause I feel all too often people are like rushing to get business cards made and, and all this stuff. And I got super excited. So I wanted to kind of pull back a little bit on it, but I was like, we need a name for this. And we were sitting there at dinner and the girls were, were like, why not Fred? like Fred's Coffee or something, which is my dad, um, which is the whole reason for coffee and why I'm addicted to coffee. I've drank coffee since I was a little kid. He was in the coffee industry, uh, with food craft coffee services back in the day. Um, and when they said that, I was kind of like, oh, wow, like that, 
that'd be kind of cool. Like, I like that. Good suggestion, girls. So, Fred's Roasted became. Um, and I don't know, it just kind of, like, flowed like Fred's. I don't know, kind of coffee shop-ish, right? Um, so, that that's what kind of stuck. And we got the trailer, got it gutted, got everything done. Really, like, the main part is, is done and ready. Um... I just need to figure out this little front section, what I'm going to do. And then I need to get the name on the side of it. I've had three people I've tried to have paint the logo. Um, and no, they've all fallen through. Um, I don't want to put a vinyl sticker on the side of it. I don't, I don't know. It just looks, it doesn't fit what I would, what I feel like the brand is and like kind of like hometown and like homegrown on a like older horse trailer like you throw like just a sticker on there i don't know it's like that's like every other food truck or food trailer that you go out and buy like again that's why this process takes so long is because i want to do it all myself and i could have gone out and bought a brand new trailer already ready with a kitchen and just go out there and start serving coffee and not care but i don't know i care too much to have it have like a personal personal taste I guess or personal touch for me and, and Babs I guess so it'd be cool um so that's kind of where we're at with the trailer I just need to get the name on it right now and then we'll be good to go um coffee's not a big deal at all because I'm just gonna serve coffee that's gonna be the main focus is coffee anyways I'm not um I'm not keen on the milkshakes you know like you hear people going into Starbucks and ordering like 50 different ingredients in a cup, you know, and it's, y'all know us, like Babs and I are pretty healthy minded. Um, I kind of want to keep that in line with the coffee. Like I don't want to, I feel bad selling somebody like Frappuccinos are the easiest money maker. That's why they're so popular and they sell like hotcakes. That's why it makes me cringe. It's instant coffee. That's all a Frappuccino is. It's instant coffee, milk, sugar, cream, whatever flavor syrup you want to put in it. That's it. Now, if you find a, a place that truly does like a Frappuccino with espresso or something in it, a little bit, a little bit more to appreciate there because you're actually getting coffee in there. Like instant coffee is not, it's not coffee. Like, and that's why like you pay six bucks for a Frappuccino, and it's literally instant coffee, like garbage, that that cost them, you know, pennies. So I don't really want to get into the frappe, like all that froofy, like milkshake stuff. But I know there is a, a good market for like the espresso drinks, you know, just your traditionals, your macchiatos, your lattes, stuff like that. That's fine. Like I don't have a problem making that stuff, but we'll see. Maybe in summertime it, it will be a frappuccino thing on demand. Like we'll see, but I'm just I'm not keen on it. I get it's a money maker, but I don't know. But Fred's would be dope once we get, if we get, a brick and mortar going. Um, I think it would be just cool, like Fred's, like on the sign. It would be like back in the day, like, oh, I'm going down to Fred's place or something. I think it would be so cool have an old school coffee bar with like little twisty chairs. Like I've got it all in my head. Like I know how it's going to lay out, but it's just time. Just time and money, you know, all that good stuff that keeps us from doing so much stuff as it is, so... Um, but yeah, coffee's going good. I'm excited. Um, got to get the trailer. Somebody said something about the trailer. What did you say? Um, too bad you're not in SoCal. I know a guy who does awesome raps. Um, my cousin paints like crazy. He did pinstriping on like motorcycles for one of those like reality shows. If I could just get him to come out here, I've offered to pay for his flight, but... Um, he won't come out here. It'd be sweet if he would, because he's got major talent. Jeremy, I've actually reached out to those, um, a couple of those artists from Knoxville in Graffiti Alley. And no luck. Uh, when are the leather sleeves going to be for sale? I don't know. I've got a handful of them. I just, I haven't thought of anything to do with them yet. I was kind of waiting. I want to find them for cheaper, so that way I feel okay selling them to people because i don't want to sell them for a lot 
flying back from Thompson Station, Tennessee. Looked at a few places. Randy, that's good. Car shops should be able to paint the trailer, especially antique car show people. The trailer's painted, pa painted fine. Like, I'm done with the trailer part. Um, I just need the logo, like somebody that can replicate um, Fred's Roast logo. Put it next to the donut shop. Funny you say that, Mrs. Hafner. We'll see what happens here. Location is everything. Um, so where Richie Cream is isn't my ideal location. Not somewhere where I would be looking at. But with all the Amazon talk and everything, it's location is everything. So we'll see what happens. Friends and Friends, Brick and Mortar Cafe, that'd be pretty sweet. See it now. I'll take a coffee with sugar. Black it is. Do you have Frappuccino <laughs> coffee? Black it is. Cr crickets are a sign that fall is coming. Yes, it is. Hopefully sooner than later. You can paint yourself with cutout decals. Williams, I am not that talented. I would, I would sit there and pick that thing apart. I would mess up somewhere and then... What is she barking at? Her deer's probably back. See what it is. She has a couple different barks. Um, and that's not a defensive bark. Um, they're interesting, like Anatolian Shepherds. So when they get in defense mode, their that little fluffy tail they have curls up like really tight, and it becomes a much deeper bark. So I can tell when some something's messing with something, which I don't, I don't think it is. Let's go out there right now. Show you how freaking dark it is outside. What you got, Mace? What is it? What? The girls are good. What's wrong? You just wanted to see them? We just got some chicks up there. I don't see anything. You just want to say goodnight to him? All right, well, I don't think it was anything, girl. Yeah, you got with her. Um, she's pretty good because she'll alert um, when you get raccoons over by a chicken coop. Um, we haven't had coyotes yet, knock on wood, um, but coyote mating is coming up. Um, so she's she's been a savior to have around. Like she's good. Um, we went to the Amish market Saturday. Uh, down in Inglewood, and they have like a, a thing of pup of rabbits. Like it's like a small, it's like a small little cage, no bigger than this table right here. And there's like five different pens in it, and four of them are sectioned off with bunnies. And then the last one, there's two Anatolian Shepherd puppies in it. I don't know how old they were, but they were very small. Maybe eight weeks. Looked like Macy when we brought her home. Shoved in this little freaking cage. And this little one came up and was panting and was just... She looked so... He looked so hot. Like, I felt so bad. They were only 250 bucks. If Babs was not there, I would have... I probably would have bought both. Because I would have felt bad if I bought one and not the other. Because then they'd be separated. But she would have killed me. I would have been dead. But if it were up to me... I let puppies be running all over this place. Little Macy's running everywhere. Um, it broke my heart. Like, 
and I went to talk, I wanted to talk to the guy, but I don't know, the, the Amish have their way of doing things. Um, so I'm not gonna, you know, step in there, but I did feel it was wrong and I really wanted to say something and I should have. So I want one when we got land, good price for one of those pups. It is. And they, they were so adorable. They are such a good dog. Um, don't mess around and see a snake out there. Nah, there won't be any snakes. It's cooled off a lot, actually. SoCal inland area is 100 plus. Ugh. Cookie therapy, getting to making beer. That's a whole nother game. I can't, I can't do making beer. I'd rather just go buy, buy beer. Coffee's a different thing. I know I, I know I can change the world in coffee. Getting into the 40s in Toronto. You guys definitely are getting fall. Um, our friend up in Wyoming, she posted a picture today and all of her trees have changed colors already. It's crazy. We're starting to get a few leaves. A few leaves are changing colors, but this heat wave or the warm air this, this week's not gonna help. Huge coyote walking in front of the yard at my daughter's last week, not like here in California. Yeah, the Angie, that's exactly why we have Macy. Um, the coyotes here are not like coyotes you normally see. They're not, they're like a full, they're Macy's size and bigger for sure. Um, question about fences. Don't see too many backyard fences. Is there a rule against it? Two small dogs, which is why? No. Uh, usually if you put up a fence, it means you don't like people or you don't want people to like you. That's why you don't see fences. Um, but, uh, Definitely people put them up though for dogs and small dogs. So there's definitely nothing against that and people would understand. Now there are some areas that are against, that don't, they have rules against chain link, chain link fence. Um, but uh, that's only in like certain areas. So it's not too bad, but um, yeah, I would understand putting up, especially with two little dogs, you know, so they have somewhere to run or go to the bathroom and hang out during the day. Like that makes sense. Um, yeah, wooden fence would be fine, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, I just hope, I hope it cools off quicker. Last year, we didn't have a cool off. It stayed very warm into October. So we didn't have much of a fall, much of changing of leaves. Um, it kind of went from zero to a hundred real quick. So we, th there was some color, but not what there should be. So hopefully this is more gradual. We'll start tapering off at the end of September. October will be a nice steady decline into November. And then they call it the bottom falling out is what I'm told. And that's, they've kind of seen those weekends, like where it finally in November, it's like, it's it's been like in the 60s, 50s. And then all of a sudden it's like upper 30s, 40s. Like it's just there and it's there for the, the time being in winter time. So we'll see when when the bottom falls out, um, hopefully it's a gradual decrease to that this year so we get some really good color to show y'all. Vax, can I ask a Vax question or would this be a bad place to ask? Ask away, people will ask all the time. So um, we hiked Benton Falls yesterday, know several spots already changing colors. Oh, nice. Yeah, if you go up into the, up in the Smokies is definitely, um, you already see changing leaves just because it's naturally, I mean, it, I'd say 10 degrees cooler. If, if you're ever in the area and it's hot and you want to escape the heat, you go to the Smokies. Temperature just whew, sinks down, drops off. Like you're at least 10 degrees cooler than here in the valley. Um, so yeah, so up there, especially if you go up to LeConte, all those higher elevations now, it's cold. Like you... Like some of the hikes Babs and I were going on in the morning, like you had to start with a jacket. You had to start with something because it was definitely cold, um, but it would heat up as you get going. So, Angie, my daughter just got a fence quote between ten and 16000 for her property. Yep, that's another thing to take into account. And if you're doing wood, you got to figure um, the upkeep, right? Um, if you're going to paint it, but then you also got to seal it and how often you have to seal it. Um, every so many years or so. Love the changing of the leaves, so we aren't planning on it, but I'm escaping the mandates in Cali. Wifey is concerned that it might end up being there. We homeschool. Um, there is 
going to be no mandate for a vax um, in Tennessee that I see in the foreseeable future. Um, Bill, Governor Bill Lee was actually a lo right alongside with some of the other governors the minute that speech was done and he said, not happening. Not happening. I know a lot of people aren't happy with Bill Lee and stuff he has done. And it, you get into a trap, especially coming from California, coming from a, a state, you know, and you finally get to like a state like Tennessee that's red and conservative values and a little bit more freedom. You get here and you get excited, right? Because you see Bill Lee standing up for things that California would never have, but he's not full, full, you know, full pedal to the floor uh, the way that some of the other states are or should be. Um, so you kind of get, you feel good because you're like, oh, finally a red state, a free state, like this is cool. But you start to realize as you settle in, like, okay, there's a few more things that are kind of weird that he's doing that you think shouldn't be happening but are. But that was one of my favorite things when he stood up right, right away after that um, speech and came out and said, nope, not, not going to happen, not going to happen. Have a Biden supporter next door to us really considering a fence here in Maryville now. <laughs> Saw a video on Dana's Facebook channel. Pregnant mother forced to take a job, baby born, shaking. Oh, that is terrible. Put the fence around the Biden supporter. Help me recall. Yes. Ms. Hafner, I was saying that earlier. I just, my gut is saying it's not going to happen, unfortunately. But my fingers are crossed. I am rooting for it, for everyone there. So, um, are you burning firewood this winter or flipping a furnace switch? I've been cutting today. Six cords. Um, I would love to have a wood-burning stove. We have, we have a, a heater, um... We don't have a fireplace. We have like one of those little like fake things that just turns on some like heating element and blows it, which it works. It's fine. I mean, our little shack, you know, we don't have much to it. So, but I would love a wood burning stove out here just to heat this place up so I can come out here and hang out because it gets, it gets cold during the winter time out here. It's concrete and stuff, but we'll make it work. I don't know. We've got the coffee roaster going, so maybe it'll add some heat. Uh, song, yeah, anytime. Ask away. Go back to California in two years, no matter what. That's awesome. Newsom is going to exact revenge on the people of California after this. Exactly. That's what I'm fearing. Fix is already in with a recall. Yep. Uh, we were sent two ballots, one mail in and one in person. Interesting. See, and that's just it. There's already so much going on, like so much mix up stuff. Nice. You find anything out there? Hey, was anything going on? You do your patrol? You're good? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, good. She said everything's good. Um, Bills, they tried to sneak it a couple weeks ago. Some dash really deeds were a It just, I don't know where we're at. Everyone keeps asking me when I'm running for office, and I laugh, but it might be needed. Who knows? That's the one thing, like, being from California and being from California, you already know what it's like to lose stuff. You already know what it's like to like stand up and fight for stuff and know you're not going to get it back. So it's like everything going on here, I want to stand up even harder for and faster for because I know what's coming down the line. I know what happens and I know you don't get it back. Like uh, before 4th of July, there's all this talk, you know, like they're like, oh, we need to reduce fireworks. Like we should limit it to, to only certain times of the year. Um, dogs are getting PTSD, like all this, like, come on, man. Like dogs have been around for how long? Like, I'm sorry you're breeding the little, little Pomeranian with something else. And you have this old chicken dog, no offense to anybody that has one of those dogs, but like they're fireworks. They've been around forever. Like we don't need to get rid of fireworks because a dog is freaking out. Um, and when, once we do take away the fireworks throughout the year and we only have them those certain days of the year, then they're only going to become fireworks on 4th of July. And then it'll be no fireworks on 4th of July. We'll only let the shows handle it. So, and it's just like everything else that's been stripped away. You can see how it went through the last 18 months, right? 
little freedoms get stripped away. You can't do this, can't do that. And then you come back, like, it, it sucks. So I see all of that stuff coming down the line and you see it happening here in Tennessee. And it's like, nope, like that can't happen, right? So it's like there was a commission meeting a couple weeks ago for two housing developments. It is awesome. They had an amazing turnout for it. People arguing against the developments. They put it on pause. It's going to be brought back up at another thing at another date. Perfect. We need to get more people at the meeting the next time now to keep the developments stopped and on pause. You can't developing. Developing is fine. There's nothing wrong with developing. It's adding value. It's adding. You know, it adds all kinds of positives as well. It adds negatives if you don't put the infrastructure first. So the infrastructure has got to come. You've got to fix the roads. You've got to add markets. You've got to add gas stations. You have to add, make sure the schools are there. All of that's got to come before. The, talk about putting the cart before the horse. You got to make sure the infrastructure is there before the developments go there. So any development I see going up right now, I'm just like, Oof, like let's pump the brakes. What else is going on? Like what's happening with the roads? What's happening with this and this? Making sure that's all in line before those go through. So it's been fun, like kind of getting to go to some of these meetings and seeing how things are going. Because, like anyone says, like, don't California my Tennessee. Believe me, I am the last one that wants to California, Tennessee. Most people that are coming here do not want to California, Tennessee. We want to Tennessee, California if we could. But that'll never happen. We know that. So that's why once we get here, we got to preserve this. We got to keep it the way it is. Um, and that's what scares me the most with this Amazon. Like four Amazon complexes coming in here with tens of thousands of jobs no apartments, no multifamily living areas. Like, there is zero infrastructure going in. Like, Amazon's not putting in any infrastructure. Like, they're not, they don't care about any of that stuff. They're just like, oh, we're bringing jobs. We're bringing jobs. We're bringing jobs. That's great. Like, jobs are great. But I could walk you around this entire county right now, and there are so many jobs to be had. It's insane. Now hiring jobs are everywhere. Nobody wants to work, though, right? Nobody wants to work. So Amazon brings thousands and thousands of jobs here, like for low paying jobs, like nobody wants to work right now. Like if we're in the same spot where we are now, where the government's just feeding you money and making up money and all of this stuff, like who's gonna, yeah, exactly. Like AC just said, who's gonna, who's, where are they gonna find all these employees? You have all these huge things. So I don't know, it'd be interesting to see, but I'm gonna be there selling coffee, that's for sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the world a better place with coffee. I'll tell you that much. Um, where we go? So many Republicans going to the polls until they've already voted. Yeah, Heather, that's what I was saying earlier. It's crazy. Like, it's just this. I, I'm scared there's going to be no election. No election's ever going to be the same again. You know? Um all this digital crap as much as I love digital and I hate it like we've been back and forth for the past two weeks over some like laptop fee with McKenzie school because their their website wasn't updating it takes two weeks to update and then um she had to send her transcripts because she's applying to all these colleges she had to send transcripts to Maryville College which is literally half a mile away but it's got to go through an app and go through this or that. It took a month to get transcripts sent over. I was like, dude, I will walk in there, print them out. I will go hand deliver them myself. Like, I'm all for technology. Y'all know that. I love technology. But not when it just is counterproductive like this. <sighs> Jeff, how's it going? How much longer are you collecting for St. Jude? Or is that fundraiser over? That is not over, sir. Um, that's until... So the run is December 4th. And I think they let me collect up to two weeks afterwards uh, because of the level I'm at. But I'm trying to get everything done by end of November for sure. By Thanksgiving, I want to be wrapped up and done with it and be able to kind of, you know, be proud of what, what we raised, which I'm already stoked, beyond stoked at, at $5,400. I think we're sitting at right now. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, the last live that I did... We discovered super chats. I discovered super chats. Y'all, y'all knew about super chats, I guess, and you were donating, which I think I just saw somebody else donate something, right? I saw ten bucks. 
Corky coming through with coffee beans, 10 bucks. You get the first bag on me for sure. Um, there was like, I think it was almost $200 donated this last time I came on here on a live through Super Chats. And I, I turned all that back around to St. Jude. So I'm making a cash donation to St. Jude uh, for that Super Chat money. So that was awesome of all y'all. Uh, went to school, two school board meetings in Rutherford County last week. Great showing of parents, but they still voted for mass mandates. That's fine. Keep showing up. Um, and that's the frustrating thing. Like if you follow Rooted Wings, I think on Instagram, you'll see how active she is and fired up she is in San Diego, getting people behind it. And they keep getting beat down. And is it Nathan Fletcher? I think is this guy that's just a pain, a thorn in her side. And they keep passing ridiculous stuff, but they keep showing up in bigger numbers, bigger droves, and just, there's a turning point coming. Like, it's getting louder. Um, people are starting to stand up to this stuff. Sheriff Bian Bianco, like, that doesn't surprise me at all that he stood up and wrote out a letter saying no vaccine mandates in the IE. Like, that guy is awesome. I think that was one of our last votes was for him. Um... Do, do, do. Nashville is so liberal. It is, but there's a lot of good spots on the outside. Uh, greetings from Atta Cascadero. Is that how you say it? The vote to oust Gav is tomorrow. I wonder how bad they're going to cheat. That's, that's the frustrating part. It's just two weeks. All will be fine. Yeah. Two weeks went to a few months. Went to just wear a mask. Went to just shut your business down to... My goodness. Where is Amazon going to find all these employees? Oh, I saw that one. I see. Yeah, exactly. Same thing. <sighs> the unemployment stopped as of September 1st, so people are going to have to go back to work. That would be the assumption, right? Like, you would think that's what's going to happen. But brother-in-law and nephew work for Amazon. How do they like it, Ms. Tafner? Is it a good job? Speaking of St. Jude, anyone see the all-civilian SpaceX mission, Inspiration 4? Did not see that. Amazon break, head to the coffee trailer. That's what I'm talking about, Roger. Someone's going to have to feed them caffeine. I know they can't use bathrooms, go on bathroom breaks, but they can get coffee breaks for sure. You should print meaningful quotes on the coffee cups or fun facts. That is a good idea, Angie. I'm going to keep that <clears throat> in mind and you'll get credited with that if that ever comes through because that'd be, what about dad jokes? I put dad jokes on all the cups. Jess, you've got two belts as well. Oh my Lord. What are we doing? Uh, Heather, no, the St. Jude fundraiser event is not happening. Um, I was not going to... As much as I wanted to do the event, I was not willing to force everyone to wear masks. I was not gonna do the vaccine thing. They weren't demanding that part, um, but I wasn't gonna go through all of that. Like, I don't believe sitting there having a fundraising event where we're eating dinner for a good time, listening to music, like, and everyone, no, I wasn't gonna do it. So unfortunately we had to call that off. Um, but if we do this again next year, uh, if Sam wants us to run with the family again, we will do it again and we will most definitely figure out a way to have it done, whether it's going to be, I didn't think about it until later having it at like a private residence, which would have been really cool. Um, that would have worked, but it was all too late to get everything and get the ball rolling on stuff. So unfortunately we couldn't do it. Um, hubby wants to run, fly out and run. Really? Like. He wants to come out to Memphis and run? That'd be awesome if he does. Um, YouTube takes so much from the Super Chats. Better to donate via PayPal or Venmo. That's true. Somebody said they did take uh, th like 30% or something, right? Um, yeah, I'll figure out something. We're going to figure out some way to do another type of fundraising um, event. I mean, I know it won't be obviously a live event and stuff, but... Um, we'll f still figure out something to do. Brother-in-law is in management, overwork, nephew moving up, but he's critical of practices. 
Corky says dad jokes. No, they just softer enough way to triple the normal. These dad jokes have increased my rhetorical people. They already hate me. I love dad jokes. There is nothing wrong. I always check Snapple lids for fun facts. That's funny. Snapple did used to do that, huh? Do they still do it? I haven't had a Snapple in forever. Um, that would be fun to do like dad jokes or something on it. That'd be a good idea. And when we get to that point, when we're printing cups or something, because it's probably going to be Costco or Sam's Club or something, whatever I can afford at first. Uh, but once we get, once we can have a little bit of breathing room and get fancy, then we'll get fancy with it. That'd be fun. Um, just trying to brainstorm ideas for St. Jude. If anybody thinks of anything, reach out to me, let me know. Um, again, people have already been so awesome with it. Um, anybody, I've got a running list of everyone that's already donated, um, and I'll, I'll make sure I let everything know about every, I will make sure I let everyone know when I'm going to do it. I've got all that stuff that we're just going to like raffle it away. I've got tons of bags of coffee, um, different things that like companies have sent me for random stuff. And I just want to give back however I can. So, um, we'll do that because I want to make sure I take care of anybody that's donated and make sure it's, uh, worth their while to donate. Um, I mean, it's going to a good cause regardless. Um, and I'm excited to do a video. Hopefully, pretty sure Ray is coming out to Memphis. I mean, obviously she's not running. It'd be cool if Nate, uh, her dad, I don't know if he's signed up yet. We were trying to get him to sign up because he hadn't signed up yet. Get him to like push her or something in the stroller, which if he doesn't want to do it, I'll do it. Um, I don't know if I'll do it for the entire big run, but Definitely would do it for like 5K or something. But I guess we could do it for the big run too. Why not? Um, it'd be really cool. Um, that'll be an awesome, awesome video once we show show y'all like who we're running for and just see this little girl. <clears throat> worst thing about California and worst thing about Tennessee. Worst thing about California and worst thing about Tennessee. Well, the worst thing about California... I think is knowing what California used to be to me as a kid, like how I grew up in California and like what that, how I saw California in that little time span versus when I finally became like an adult and figured out like adult things and how the world works. And then seeing California it was, a, it was a letdown, big, big time letdown. And I, I know things change and stuff, but like seeing it, like I would have moved, man, if I had, if I had seen the writing on the wall earlier, you know, if I had maybe grown up a little bit sooner, I would have been out of there way quicker, but it's all right. Everything happens for a reason. Timing is everything and it, it's worked out now. So that's good. And then what was the other part? Worst thing about Tennessee? Um... Worst thing about Tennessee. Hmm. Worst thing about Tennessee is not being able to say Merville like the locals because I get haggled nonstop. I can't say Chattanooga correctly, I guess, by people. Um, no, I'm just kidding. They're just poking fun. Um, the worst thing about Tennessee? I don't have a worst thing about Tennessee. I just, if anything, it's... What would be the worst thing about Tennessee? I guess just not... I was going to say not knowing everything about it and needing to ask people about certain things. But that's just... That's not something that's bad. Because um, you should all... We should all be asking questions of stuff we don't know. Like, we shouldn't be afraid to ask something, but... I want to have the answer to everything, and that's what I do feel kind of bad about, is if I don't have an answer to something, if that makes sense. No in and out. There you go. That, that's the bad thing about Tennessee. But it's all right. In and outs, in, I'm fine without in and out. Believe me, it's worth it. <sighs> Need to send you gift certificates for raffles for cookies. Yeah, Heather, please do. Send me a message on that so we can do that. Um... 
out and about door dashing in Orange County while enjoying Hoag's live broadcast. Looking forward to dashing in Knoxville when I move there at the end of October. I don't know why I just started singing dashing through the snow because it was way too early for that. I am not one of those people. Christmas needs to pump the brakes. Uh, we need to get through October and give the pilgrims their day. So do a live fundraiser event on here. Let everyone know when a couple of weeks before would be a good idea. Um, Dave, Dave and Harry, I'm saying, I'm assuming you're saying nothing to nothing's bad in Tennessee. Um, I used to want to retire in San Diego. That was back in the early 80s. Wouldn't want to be there now. I love San Diego, too. Like, San Diego is just such a cool place. Um, yes, vote for dad jokes. No in and out. Worst about California is the crowdness, traffic, and how expensive everything is. My ice cold Minnesota struggles with the heat humidity, but that's trivial. I'll be able to get over that. Tyler just left California today on our way. Dave and Harry, nice. Tennessee humidity, bugs, and tornadoes. Well, we don't have bugs and we don't have tornadoes. There is a little bit of humidity, but believe me, it ain't that bad. Whataburger is worse. <laughs> ice cold Minnesota heart. The carne asada ain't the same here for sure. Um, we go to La Lupita and we get the carne asada meat and I have my own marinade and I may be biased, but my carne asada does just fine out here. I think it's definitely not Chef Moritos or something from, you know, Dodger Stadium or from the guy on the corner, but it'll do. I'm okay. Macho Man Costco has Christmas stuff out. Exactly. We were there today. And I was just shaking my head because they had just put up, like, they had just had some a few Halloween costumes in the front last time we were there. And now it's, don't even get me started. It's custom furniture in demand up here. Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Bill Cox, he's the one furniture guy. I always see his ads and always drive by his store on Broadway. So he seems to be doing all right. Smokies in July. And totally hooked on Tennessee. Glad your fam made the move. Yeah. Nothing wrong with the Smokies. You get into the Smokies and... Whew, I'll hook you right in. Delta retired here. If you gotta have an in and out I got buddy passes here. I would take you up on that, Roger. I would definitely take you up. How obnoxious would that be if someone flew back to California just to get in and out and then flew back home? Sounds like something some YouTuber would do. And it'd probably get a million views and I don't know. I was born and raised in Wallen. Can't imagine living anywhere else. I love Wallen. Wallen, where's Valley? We found an awesome new coffee shop over there on our way to the Smokies. Everybody was closed in Townsend. Uh, we got turned away. That video's coming. I've been backed up on videos. Um, but we found an awesome new little coffee shop over there that Y'all should go support. I think they're going to get some Richie Cream Donuts in there, too. Um, it'd be pretty sweet. Carne asada on a coffee trailer. Ooh. Be interesting. Why not? Why not? I just need somebody from Southern California with a little bit of heritage and background, you know, that could whip up some killer beans and rice. Oh, we would make a killing out here. yeah heather exactly the humidity the humidity comment is kind of, is what i laugh at the most um it's nothing like florida it's nothing like alabama <clears throat> it is it's not what y'all think like i have a video i'm working on um i've been working on it with some other topics uh but it's basically addressing Californians that ask the silly questions um, regarding humidity, bugs, tornadoes, um, just a few of the other, like, what restaurants do you have? Um, you don't want to leave California bad enough if you're being held back by bugs, humidity, lack of restaurants, and a few other of the obnoxious questions I've read, okay? You need to stay right where you're at. Stay right where you're at. 
that's all I'm going to say on that for right now. But there's a video that it's probably going to make a lot of people upset, but it's all right. Somebody's got to say it. <sighs> Heather, exactly. Okay, so worst thing about tri-tip. That's a very good point. It's almost impossible to find tri-tip. So Tennessee butchers do not know the tri-tip cut. I've had to explain it to our cow guy multiple times, and they've actually, I think I have. So the butcher, we asked him for a tri-tip and I explained to him what the tri-tip was, right? And it's part of the sirloin, right? And this is what we got. This little, this cute little thing was our tri-tip that we got from him, right? So that's about all we get for tri-tip. Costco has these. These are fantastic. Um, Morton's of Omaha makes these. Or no. Yeah, it is Morton's. So it's it's signature Angus. It's beef. These are fantastic from Costco. These are seasoned just right. This is one of the best tri-tips. I mean, we gotta work with what we got out here, right? This is very good. Like this from Costco. This is 2.8 pounds at $6.50 a pound, 18 bucks. This is fantastic right here. If you need tri-tip, go to Costco. They've got this one. This this thing, this is as good as you're gonna get tri-tip in, in Tennessee. From what we found, because otherwise you get this little thing from the butcher. It's a fantastic tri-tip though. Now I'm hungry. Now I want to go make it. Um, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Ingles in Lenore City has tri-tip. What? Where? In that little, when you go to the back of the store and like the little meat counter thing or is it over in the rack part? Because... I'm, I go to the gym every day in Lenore City, and I'm going to stop and get tri-tip if it's there. Coffee Asada. How about a drone lesson for a donation to St. Jude Foundation Run? Anytime. You need a drone lesson, no problem. Um, you have to go right at 10 a.m. I used to live right by that one. What was that to you? Oh, in and out by LAX is always packed. Okay, I didn't see that one. Uh, Mexican Food, Creations Hogue. We might, I mean, I nothing's ever off the table, so who knows? Tyler, oh man, I almost moved to Tampa joining a band, and that humidity was easily the most extreme I've ever experienced. Exactly. Um, JK Pioneer, it's a bottom sirloin. I'll take all of the above over saying California, we're out of here. You can have a good butcher cut anything the way you want. Angie, I can't, like, the two, well, we've only had two. Um, and they just cannot cut a dang tri-tip. Yeah, that's not a tri-tip. That's what I was saying, Heather. Um, Costco is a gift from God. I love Costco. I don't like the preseason tri-tips, but that's a good price. Um, actually that, I'm, I'm not a fan of the preseason stuff either. Um, but that's a very good seasoning. Um, I definitely, we do like that one. We buy a couple when we went. Marinate my own tri-tips. I'm going to have to go look. I'm going to go look tomorrow at that Lenore City one and see if I can find a tri-tip. Tennessee is an outdoor state. I find it funny you would even worry about outdoor things. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, man, like just get out there and live and enjoy it. My in-laws live in Kodak. Moved from Louisiana four years ago. They love it. Kodak's a good spot. The Smokies had their last game there. See what happens with the new stadium. 
Um, Santa Maria tri-tip at Walmart. Haven't seen that one. Um, yeah, I'm with you, Brent. Like, if you don't want it, then don't. Like, stick, well, I was going to say stick to the city and go to Nashville, but Nashville's just as, just as bad for that stuff, so they won't like it. Have you ate Los Amigos yet? Yes, absolutely. That's the only place we go to. Um, we actually have a video coming up with Hector. Like, I'm excited. We're going to do that one. Um, that's going to be fun. We haven't seen tri-tip since we've been here. No deer since we've been here. So many things Tennessee is missing out on. Lots of bunnies and raccoon poop. <laughs> found a butcher from Sacramento when I lived in Florida, so he cut tri-tips for me. Haven't found one. A butcher from Sacramento? Oh, yeah. Okay. Show your butcher a YouTube video on how to cut it. <laughs> exactly, YouTube Academy. I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna send him the video. Oi. Did you guys get a Jeep? No, that's my brother-in-law's Jeep. It just sits there looking pretty. Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go out at all. Um, all right, so coffee's done. What time is it? Oh, it's almost 10 o'clock. All right. Well, I'm going to wind this one up. Um, anyways, coffee is underway. Coffee is being roasted. I appreciate all of y'all and the support. Again, um, I'm going to update more of stuff on the Instagram page, Fred's Roast, at Fred's Roast, F-R-E-D-S-R-O-A-S-T, Fred's Roast. Um, that'll be all the info on coffee as we go along with the roasting and when it will be available in bags and all that stuff. Um, what did I say? Patricia, I've been watching your videos for a year now. I'm from Pasadena. Sweet. How's Pasadena? Go get me a Spudorito from Bobby's Place. That's what we need to bring out here. I need to do Bobby's Place. If anybody's in Southern California, go to Pasadena. Get off at Lake Street. The Lake Street or Fair Oaks? It's Lake Street, right? Talk to myself. Um, is it Lake? It's Lake. Get off the lake, off the 210, go south, left-hand side by Ralph's. There is a place called Bobby's Place. Little little place just past the Ralph's on the left-hand side. Sputterito. Sputterito. It's a tortilla with french fries, enchilada sauce, and cheese. Wrapped up like a burrito. Sputterito. You can thank me later. Thank me later. If you're from Orange County, if you're Ben, LA, wherever you're at, if you're ever in the Pasadena area, we used to go all the time when we were kids. It used to be off of Lake, but off of Walnut at a little place and a developer bought it, turned into a bunch of apartments, really pissed us all off. But they moved it down on Lake Street. A Sputterito. And you're gonna tell me I'm crazy. It's, no, I don't want that. It's so good. And you can get it with hot sauce. If you like hot stuff, get it with hot sauce. So maybe that's what I need to do out here is just create a sputterito of some sort. Cause that, oh. damn, why'd you say Pasadena? That brought up, that, that hurt. That brought up some memories. Um, I'm looking for an easy trail to do out here on the Smokies. Plenty of them. If you ever need a trail, let me know. I'll give you all kinds of good place. I'm at the Smokies. Oh, you're out. Wait, you're at the Smokies? You're out here at the Smokies. Uh, tons of good trails. Um, I was going to say Abrams Falls Trails is a fun one, but Cades Cove is closed. Um, Laurel Falls, they're charging you for right now if you want to go by and check it out. Um, if you go up, if you go up to look up Alum Cave Trails, goes up towards Mount LeConte. You don't have to go all the way up, but Alum Cave Trails is very, very fun. There's like an arched rock and a tunnel you can go through. If you get just to where the bluffs are, it's a gorgeous view of the Smokies. Absolutely awesome area. That's a fun one. Or go up to the Gap, um, and you can go anywhere across the Gap. Um, there's uh, go to Klingman's Dome. Get up there early, though. Get up to Klingman's Dome. That's a good walk up there. You see, see all of Tennessee. You can see Carolinas. You can see all kinds of stuff. That's a beautiful place, too. Um if you want to get away from the Smokies and you want to go up Foothills Parkway, go towards the Lookout Tower that's just above Maryville on the backside. Uh, that's an awesome spot to go. Um, Cades Cove Jeep Outpost for the Jeepies. I see that. I see you, Bluebird. That's a fantastic place, too. So 
Uh, but yeah, that's it. Uh, good night, everybody. Like I said, jump over to Fred's Roast uh, to keep up with the coffee stuff. We'll figure this, we'll figure these roasts out, and we are going to get, um, we're gonna get these going. Did I do a video on Bobby's place? Did I do a video on Bobby's place? I don't remember if I did. We might have. It might have been mentioned in one of them though. Um, but sputteritos. We gotta make some sputteritos. All right, that's it, y'all. Coffee. Oh, so good. I can't wait to share it with all of you.